Hello and welcome. Today we get to start the overview for lessons one through four in level B. I am excited to get to walk alongside with you and I mean that literally. I am going to be also teaching my granddaughter in level B. So we're going to do this together. I know some of you, well probably most of you, are really new to Right Start or even to homeschooling. I'm sure a lot of you are a little bit overwhelmed, a little bit nervous. Oh my gosh, there's so much to do. So before we get started, let's just, let's just take a deep breath. Let it out. Those of you that are, have used Right Start before and you're coming in at level B, it could still be overwhelming for you. So just one more time. Breathe in. Breathe out. And let's get started. We're going to have a good year. So for these overviews, you will need your teacher's manual. This is not something that I'm going to be showing you pages. You're going to open up the book and follow along yourself. So you might want to have a pen handy or a highlighter handy and you can mark up your book. Ooh, I know some of you are going, oh, mark in my book. I want to resell this book. And that's okay too. Just get a piece of paper and a pen and make your notes on your paper. Then you can slip them in by the lesson as needed. I do want to do a little bit of housekeeping first. In your teacher's manual, when you open it up, I am going to show this page. This is a copyright page. Just so you know, you can make copies of the appendix for your children. The appendix is found in the back of the teacher's manual. You also got a appendix packet if you got the book bundle, which has copies of that in there also. If you need to make copies of any other page in this book, just contact Right Start and get their permission. The other thing I'd like to point out is at the bottom, over here under the ISBN, there is a date. That is the print date. So my book was printed in June of 2020. If you have a book that was printed before June of 2020, I want to take a second. I'm going to take you to our website where you can see where there have been some corrections made. So here we are. Our website is rightstartmath.com. If you look at the top, you're going to see the word resources, hover, go down to teaching support and click, scroll down your page, you'll see where it says corrections, scroll down to level B, and there you have it. Notice at the top, the date says January 5th, 2020. That's the most recent update. What you want to do is you want to look at this change date. Let's just say you have a 2017. You're going to look for anything that's older than May of 2017. You're going to want to pay attention to this one that's dated 2020. Go down. Here's another one dated 2020. Down here you have 2018. So those are the ones you want to pay attention to. So what I like to do is I just like to look at the corrections. I like to make note of them in my teacher's manual or the worksheets, whichever one it's in, and then you're ready for the year. So let's get started. Before we open up to lesson one, I want you to look at the table of contents really quick at the first 11 lessons and notice they have the word review before them. If you are coming in to level B and you used level A, you can skip through these lessons if you know that your child really knows this material. But I would like to make a suggestion that you actually just go through these review lessons. I know when I did this with my children, we just looked at it as a nice, gentle way to get into homeschooling again. Uh, we knew that we weren't going to have really challenging lessons, that we would have a lighter day, and it just made getting back into the groove of things a lot easier. Now, if you have never used Right Start before, and you're coming in at level B, and your child has done a kindergarten program, or you know that they understand their facts up to 10, then you do not want to skip these review lessons. We consider these transition lessons for new students who have never used Right Start before. And so what it's going to do is, while some of it's going to seem familiar to your children, you're, they're going to adjust to the way Right Start words things, 
the concepts that Right Start teaches. It's going to give you a chance to kind of gently ease into the program also so that when the lessons do start up, you're going to be familiar with things that were taught in level A that we're just going over and reviewing now. All right, so let's turn to lesson one. It's called Review Lesson One, Subitizing One to Five. I want to point out just the setup. You have your objectives at the top. Many, including myself, have a tendency to just skim through or overlook the objectives. I do want to point out the objectives are letting you know ahead of time what is going to be gone over or taught in this lesson. Notice the words that are being used. Like here, we're going to start learning. We're going to subitize. We're going to learn. And if you flip through the next couple lessons, it says continue to learn, to review, to review, and to continue subitizing. The activities for teaching is what you're going to teach your children. Some like to call it scripted. I like to call it guide. It's a guide of what you need to say, the questions you need to ask, the answers are in brackets, which is kind of nice. You know, you have a morning, it's kind of rough. You don't have to think too much. It gives you the answers there. And then on the top of the page is the materials. So for the next four lessons, I'm gonna let you know what materials you need to get ready for the week. This way you get out the items you need, you're set. You don't have to keep going or rummaging and make sure you have it. You get it out ahead of time the week will go much smoother. The first material it calls for is Yellow is the Sun Music, which is Appendix 1. Just a heads up, not all the appendix pages are in this appendix packet that came with your book bundle. So when you go to look and you see, here's the page. Look, it starts with two. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm missing number one. Well, there's a little paper here that explains to you that not all the appendix pages are in this packet. For instance, in the back of the teacher's manual, where the appendix pages are, so you can see where it says appendix, this is appendix page one. It is the music for Yellow is the Sun. You only need this page if you are musically inclined and you would like to play this on whatever instrument you are proficient in. I am not proficient on a musical instrument, unfortunately. So therefore, I'm not gonna print this page out. Underneath where it says the music appendix page one, it says, or the Yellow is the Sun CD. Problem is not everybody has a CD player. So I'm gonna take you to our website where you can find this song and you can download it. So we are again at the Right Start Math website, which is rightstartmath.com. This time, hover over curriculum. You'll see where it says songs, click on that. Notice that there's yellow is the sun, 30 days has September and writing numbers. So you can access these songs on our website. For yellow is the sun, click on the arrow, Scroll down, you'll see the Yellow is the Sun MP3. Click on that, and it just starts right up. If you click on the three dots, it'll give you the option to download. You'll also need Yellow is the Sun book. This is a fun book. You'll be using this quite often. I want to point out something to you, though, that I wasn't even aware of when I first started using this. I'll just go to this one. You can see where it says, ducks will swim and dive, my whole hand makes five. It's gonna show you how to do it with your hand. It'll show you on the abacus, but look over here. How many ducks are there? How many clouds are there? I didn't realize that when I first started using this with my kids. So kids like to do that. So help them, don't tell them it's over there, but ask them if they notice. You'll also need your one by one color tiles. I do wanna point out that in the materials, in lesson one, it does say one by one which is important. You want it one by one. So if you did not get your tiles through Right Start Math, check and see because that's going to be important in the lessons when we get into measuring. The last of the materials for lesson one are the tally sticks. Yes, they are also known as craft sticks. Those of you that got the Super Saver set, this didn't come into your kit. You may have something like this hanging around the house. If not, it's something you can get at a craft store. 
go ahead and turn over to lesson two because I want to show you something in the materials. If you notice, number three is bolded. All that means is that when you see something that's bolded in the materials, that's an item that is not going to be in the kit. That is something that most people are going to have around the house. So for those of you that like to be super organized, at the front of the book, it says materials needed, not included in the Right Start to math set. So you can look at this and you can see if these are items that you have around the house or if it's items that you're gonna have to find somewhere else. A book about pyramids. So that's something you'd want to go to the library and get something about the pyramids if you don't have one already. Well, in lesson three, it calls for a calendar that shows all the months where you can flip the page. So like at the top of the page, it might be a cute little picture and on the bottom, it's a full month. You can use that for lesson two also. So you don't need a separate large calendar with one month, you can get a full calendar with many months, but then just use the one for lesson two. And in lesson two, you will need the abacus. I have a piece of paper behind it, so that way it's easier for you to see when I'm moving the beads. And in lesson four, you do need your appendix page two. This comes in the book bundle. The appendix pages, they need to be cut out. Now, if you have a child who likes to cut or wants to practice cutting, let them cut it out. However, if they're not really good at cutting, make copies of this. If you forget, it's okay because you could also find this page in the back of your teacher's manual. And then the last material you need to have ready is their workbook. You're going to use worksheet number one. Let's go back to lesson one. I want to go over a little bit in the lessons now. At the beginning, it calls for learning the words to the song. Now you could play the music and let the children listen to it. However, just know that there might be some children who don't care for the music. That's okay. You can just read it through. That's what I ended up doing with my boys. They were not big into the music. My grandchildren loved it, but my younger boys, they preferred me to read it. So we read it. I want to point out one of the things we did. You may want to try it with your kids. You may not. It really depends on your child. When you get to number four, it says, hear the thunder roar. Here's the mighty four. So what we did is we just exaggerated. Hear the thunder roar. Here's the mighty four. <laughs> yeah, it's silly. But my grandkids, my kids like doing that. And then for five, it says ducks will swim and dive. My whole hand makes five. And so we would high five. So when you get down to the last one, it says ducks will swim and dive. Ten is five and five. And so we would high five with both, well, high ten, I guess. I want you to look over on the second page where it says showing quantities one to five. And you need to talk to your child about the word subitize. Subitize is kind of an interesting word. It's a little awkward to say if you're not used to saying it. I know it was for me anyway, but now I say it all the time, so it's a lot easier. All subitize means is being able to see a quantity without counting. It is natural for us to see up to about six things and be able to see that quantity without having to group. And one reason why our abacus is colored the way it is is to help children see quantity by grouping in fives. But in this lesson, we're just going to learn to subitize one to five. And so you want them to be able to show on their hands, you know, if you show them this, can they tell you how much that is without counting? Most children are probably going to be really good with numbers one to five. Because if you think about it, when they have their birthdays, when they were like two, and you ask them, how old are you? They'll say two or, you know, how old are you going to be? I'm going to be three. You know, some kids, oh, I'm going to be five. But think about this. How many kids say, oh, I'm going to be six? I've never seen any child do that. So I do know that most kids are going to be good with recognizing quantities one through five on their fingers. So turn your page to lesson two. And at the beginning, under activities for teaching, it says warm up. What a warm up is, is usually just review. It's a review of something previously learned. Now these are review lessons, so some of these things that we're putting in here are things that were learned in level A. 
those of you whose children know this, and you know, but you know, but you know that they know it, you don't need to do the warm up. For those of you that are coming in and have never done Right Start before, I wouldn't necessarily skip them. Maybe like the days of the week, if you know they know the days of the week, that would be fine. But the first part of the warm up, showing your fingers and asking them to tell you the quantity and doing the song or reading from the book, don't skip that. That's important. On the second page, it talks at the top about having your child when they're showing numbers, because we're doing numbers six and seven in this lesson, that they're going to use their left hand to do numbers one through five, and then their right hand for the other numbers like so here's six now this really is my right hand but for you if i'm mirroring a child it would be my left hand in the section on quantity with tiles it calls for getting a group of five tiles in one color and another group of five tiles in a different color this is where i like to ask the child hey pick out the colors you want to use and then i let them pick out the tiles out of the container. So in this lesson, we're also introducing the abacus. This is a really awesome tool that your child is gonna to get to use and get to help visualize quantities. So you know, it's sitting correctly. You want this circle in the upper right-hand corner when you're looking at your abacus. It has an AL in it, and all that AL means is activities for learning. This is cleared. You want it to where you're going to move the blue beads over. So when they're going to enter and you ask them to enter three, you want them to enter three without counting. They just move it over. Now, I know how kids can be, especially if they're really used to counting like I was. And let me tell you right now, counting is not bad and counting is not wrong. But in Right Start, we want children to see quantity when we're doing arithmetic, when we're doing our adding and subtraction and different aspects like that, because it's going to help them with their mental math. It's not that they're never going to count. Counting, we need to count things. But right now, our goal is to get them to be able to see the quantity without counting. So let's just say you have a child who counts. And so when you say, I want you to enter three, and they'll enter one, two, three. Please don't tell them, oh, don't do that. You don't, counting is bad. Don't say anything like that. Say, oh, that's great. You do have three. Now on the next line, can you enter three without counting? And then see what they do. And if they do it again, one, two, three. Again, well, that's great. You're right. That is three. So on the next line, we're going to try it again without counting. And you might want to go in there and separate it a little bit and ask them, can you enter three without counting? And so they can enter their three. It may take going all the way down these rows before your child gets comfortable with entering three without counting, and that is okay. So to clear the abacus, all you do is you just slide it over and it's cleared and you start again. And lastly, for lesson two, under explanations at the bottom of the second page, it talks about not all children respond well to answering quickly. Do me a favor, give them time to think. A lot of times I know I'm guilty of this, I ask my child a question and I expect an immediate answer. And if they don't give it to me immediately, I'll give them the answer. Well, guess what I'm conditioning my children to do? Just wait. Mom will give us the answer. In lesson three, again, under warm ups, we're going to work with reading the book about yellow is the sun. It talks about singing. I consider that optional. It has you do the days of the week and the months of the year. Again, if your children know this, you don't need to review it, but if they don't know it, this is great review. In this lesson, we're going to be subitizing eight to 10. And eight is considered probably the hardest number to subitize, to see. And you may find your child needs extra practice. If there's areas my children 
could use some work on, then random times throughout the day, I may just hold up my fingers and ask them, hey, how much is this? Let them have a second. And you don't want to keep it up long because if you do, they're going to have time to count. You want to do it for about one or two seconds. How much is this? So you can make a game out of it and just randomly through the day, throw out your fingers and ask them to tell you, or you give them a number and ask them to show you their fingers. So at the end of the lessons, there's an in conclusion. And an in conclusion can have a couple different things that it does. It could be a summary of what was learned. It could be something that's going to make them have to think based on what they learned. Well, the one on lesson three is something that's going to make them have to think because it says, with the stairs on the abacus. Now, children coming in from level A, they're probably going to know what stairs are on the abacus. But for those of you that are new, you're like, what? Stairs on the abacus? See if your child can figure it out before you help them. I'm going to show you what stairs on the abacus looks like. This is actually something that they're going to do in the next lesson. All they're doing is they're going to enter one bead on the first row, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then if you notice, we have one through ten on this side. And then on this side, it starts at one and ends with nine. But one of the things we'll say, can you ask the child to find the five? They'll point to the five. Then they'll say, can you find the other five? And all it's wanting to know is, can you find the other five on the other stairs? Or what about the two? Can you see the two? Can you find the other two? That's all it's asking. So here's the last lesson for the week, lesson four. In the warm up, again, it's going over the days of the weeks, the months, and then there's a section in here that says showing quantities one to 10 with your fingers. That is a must do. You really want to make sure your children can show you the quantities using their fingers. On the second page where it talks about quantities one to 10 with tiles, again, let them pick out their, the color tiles they want for the two different groups of five. Some children may benefit with using blue and yellow tiles to mimic what is on the abacus. Any color that they do well with, let them use. So in here, you can see where it says stairs on the abacus. So it's showing you how to do stairs on the abacus. And to the right, it talks about how important it is that they enter these quantities without any counting. Now here's where a fifth day comes in handy. We don't really have any games to play this week. But if your child needs more work on supertizing, you have a fifth day that you can work on it. But do me a favor. Make it fun, turn it into a game. It's a lot more enjoyable. We did it. We got through this first overview of lessons one to four. I'm so excited for you guys. Do you know the mission for Right Start is we want children to understand, apply, and enjoy mathematics. That is what you are going to be doing when you work through Right Start with your kids. So have a great week. And I'll see you next week as we go over the lessons for five to eight.